We have a ghost occupation. I actually have paranormal investigator on here. If she actually gets that. <laughs> Let's see how they turned out. Drum roll, please. Happy holidays, everyone. So I'm sure as many of you already know, I am a ho 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 for fan art. A fan art aficionado, if you will, a connoisseur, a hoarder. As you can tell by the background behind me. And this year I wanted to do something to help support one of the main pillars of fandom, which is fan artists. And like the ghost of Jacob Marley suddenly visiting Ebenezer Scrooge in the dead of night, I was struck with an idea. People love making original characters, OCs, whether it's for their own original story they're creating or to feel more part of a story that already exists, or they just like the character design aspect of it, making OCs is fun. And sometimes, like you've been playing The Sims for six hours straight, not that I know of course, you just gotta let fate decide how your character is gonna turn out no matter how wacky or randomized or cursed they are. Wow, this actually kind of explains how people turn out. for all just cursed, randomized OCs created by some twisted, malevolent god. And that's how we got here today. I will be using a bunch of different randomizers to create 12 OCs, each of which will be drawn and brought to life by a different artist. The character traits will be vast, so like an expectant mother, I only hope they turn out okay. <laughs> you know Octomom who had like eight babies at the same time? Screw that, I'm doing 12. So without further ado, let's get started. But before we begin, all these different OCs are gonna be varied in terms of their hair type, hair color, hair length. And no matter what type of hair you have, if you wanna give the gift of good hair this holiday, season, then consider checking out Function of Beauty, the sponsor of today's video. Function of Beauty offers entirely customizable hair care products tailored precisely to your hair's needs. Not only are they 100% vegan, but they are also 100% cruelty, sulfate, and paraben free. Take a quick quiz outlining your hair type and hair goals. Choose what colors and scent you'd like for your shampoo and conditioner. I am always quite fond of Striker Rose and decided to give Function's holiday colors a go in my quest to try every color they offer. And just like that, you're set for better hair for the upcoming new year. Year. Or better yet, give the gift of custom hair care to friends and family. As you can probably tell, my hair is long. I also have some bleach sections that I dyed over, and despite everything my hair has been through, Function of Beauty has kept it healthy, shiny, and checked. And I've been using their products for, I don't even know how long, honestly. I love their products, they've been taking care of my hair for a while, and they've been an awesome sponsor, so if you're interested, then check them out. Right now is the best time to order because you can save up to $49 on custom holiday bundles with free shipping. Click the link in my description box and gift your friends and family a one-of-a-kind custom bundle to meet their unique self-care needs. Thanks again, Function, and let's dive into the video. All right, so we have a bunch of different random picker wheels from aesthetic to height to creature type. No, I didn't want to do just humans because that would be boring. So we're going to have some vampires and witches and androids in the mix. Everything under the sun for these characters will be determined by the wheels. Our first character will be a vampire. They will be a man. Your length, very short. Hair type, wavy. No hairstyle in particular, it seems. Bangs. You will have birthmarks and moles. And a 90s aesthetic. Wow, we're already off to a great start. It's gonna be a short king. And Thin. For his personality, we're gonna spin this wheel three times and hope to God that the personality traits don't clash with each other. He is romantic, moody, and cocky. And finally, his occupation shall be... He's a grocery store clerk, I love it. Dude, I really wanna see how this turns out now. For the color palette stuff, such as hair color, skin tone, eye color, I'm using a random palette generator and just a random color generator for that. And here we go! And his clothing color palette as well. That'll be interesting for a 90s aesthetic. Next character! We have a ghost. And they will be a woman. Medium hair length. Wavy again, okay. Hair style. Okay, half up, half down. No hair details in particular. Um, birthmarks and moles again, geez. For aesthetic, we've got a vintage aesthetic. Okay, it kind of goes with the ghost theme. Oh, she's short. Pleasantly plump. Personality time, we got cheerful, flamboyant, and sassy. Occupation. I actually have paranormal investigator on here. If she actually gets that. <laughs> She investigates herself? Or maybe she's like Danny Phantom and she finds the bad ghost. Where the, what are the heckin' chances? And here's her color schemes. I actually like the sort of blues and greens going on. It actually 
works really well with the whole ghost thing. We have a werewolf who is non-binary. Very long hair. That is straight. Her hairstyle, it shall be braided. This poor werewolf's gonna have bangs. No skin details, it seems. For well, aesthetic, we have Kawhi. We're gonna have a super cutesy werewolf. That's adorable. Wait. This is the best idea ever. Holy sh**. They will be of average height. And average build. Lazy. Goofy. <laughs> and moody. Oh, they're such a character already. Their job shall be a firefighter. I'm trying to picture this in my head right now. Okay, so we have Kawhi, werewolf, firefighter. And here are the color schemes for our werewolf friend. We have another vampire we have another woman her hair shall be long and curly i like it her hairstyle okay other so i will leave that up to the artist then almost all of these people have had birthmarks and moles so far what is this her aesthetic will be loungewear okay so casual vampire then tall lady i love it and athletic bill curious serious and contemplative so sort of a more aloof character then i like it this category i feel like we get the most shenanigans and drama out of she's a pop idol okay so a vampire in loungewear who's a pop idol. Okay, we'd love to see it. Here is her color palette, and I kind of like the sort of like muted tones we got. Honestly, it goes super well together. I thought we'd get some really weird, funky combinations. Next one, we have a witch. Our witch will be a man. He is a boy witch. Medium length hair, that is wavy. His hair will be braided. He's gonna I love that. Oh my god. For his aesthetic, he will have a pastel aesthetic. We're gonna have a pastel witch. A giant pastel witch. Maybe an athletic build. Personality-wise, he will be sleepy. Sophisticated. And your occupation, good sir, shall be... Oh, pff, he's a student. A sleepy student witch in pastels. Oh, he has pink hair too. It's perfect. Next character is an android. This is really cool because I'm gonna let the artist basically interpret however they want to make the android, whether it's more mechanical or more human-like, like Detroit like Become Human style. It's just, it's gonna be neat. Android shall be non-binary. Short. An updo hairstyle. Okay. So we might get something like a bun or like maybe pigtails. No hair details. No skin details. For aesthetic, we have indie. That's cool. So kind of like a boho sort of style with like a very futuristic form. Mm. They're gonna be super short. That's adorable. Thin. Personality. They will be calm, dreamy, and witty. Okay. So I'm kind of picturing like some sort of carefree, chill, almost hippie sort of person. I like it. Okay, maybe like nix everything I just said about, you know what? No, they can be like a hippie, free-loving assassin. It's okay. They're just vibing as they kill people. Got quite the collection of eclectic characters right now. It's great. I feel like this is a great exercise for the artists too. It's really pushing their creativity and just the bounds of like how to make characters with like certain limitations, but with enough freedom to kind of like put your own spin on it. Now we have an angel, a woman, and for hair, very long hair, very long straight hair, like me. <laughs> Hairstyle will be up to the artist, okay. No hair details. Scar, dang. I'm interested in seeing where the artist put the scars. Wait, this is gonna tie into backstory somehow. Oh, God damn it. Am I actually making backstories for these people now? Ah! Watch me accidentally create a whole freaking fandom from this video. Just by making some wild heckin' OCs. For our angel's aesthetic, she will be a goth. A gothic angel. That's actually really, really cool. She shall be tall. An athletic build. She will be cheerful, devious, clumsy. She's freaking fantastic. Let's see what she's gonna do for a living. Uh... She's gonna be a librarian. A gothic angel who's clumsy and devious and cheerful, who's a libra- Oh my goodness, I really hope she's gonna be like knocking over books and stuff. Whoa, this is gonna be a really interesting palette. Dang, okay, so like a lot of purples and pinks and like- Almost a candy sort of? Oh, this is gonna be something to pull off. This character will be a witch. And they will be a woman. 
Short hair. Wavy short hair. Gosh, so many wavies. Half up, half down. No hair details. More birthmarks and moles? Hey. Kid core aesthetic. It's just a lot of bright colors and sort of like cutesy kitty design. If the color palette ends up not being super colorful, then I don't know how they're gonna do this. Average height, average build, contemplative, romantic, and dramatic. Oh gosh. Is she the drama? I don't think she's the drama. And for your occupation, Miss Witch, you will be... She's gonna be Bill Nye! A witch scientist. Is this freaking arcane? <laughs> okay, so funnily enough, we did get some nice bright colors for the clothing palette. We've got a scientist witch, a dramatic scientist witch in kid core. We have a mermaid slash merman. A man, so you're a merman. Short hair. Curly short hair. Oh, he's gonna have bangs? I don't think I've ever seen a merman with bangs. Guess we'll see. <laughs> and he's gonna be a cottage core merman. Cottage core merman. With an average height. I wonder if that includes the tail. And muscular. Ooh, 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 ooh. Our soft merman will be gloomy, sassy, and a crybaby. Working as a photographer. Oh, this poor child is a hot mess. I already love it. <laughs> We've got a fairy. Who is a woman. We have medium length hair. Wavy medium length hair. And a ponytail. She has bangs. And freckles. Finally, one freckle character. Her aesthetic of choice is... Baddie, damn. Well, Tinga's always been a baddie, so. <laughs> average height, average build. She is courageous, lazy, and nerdy, cute. Mechanic, dude, she's essentially a modern day Tinkerbell. Here's her color palettes. Okay, two more to go. Let's see what we get. We have an animal hybrid who is non binary. They have long hair, long wavy hair that is half up and half down. No hair details. More birthmarks and moles. Their aesthetic will be vapor wave that's an interesting twist very tall average build and they are short tempered two faced and dramatic oh my god who is this incarnate of chaos <laughs> smell the conflicts with the other characters. They're a writer to boot. Why can I see them owning their own burn book? Our final character is an animal hybrid again. Okay. Who is a woman. Very long hair. Curly hair. And a ponytail. She has bangs. Freckles, cute. And she has a trash core aesthetic. Okay. Very tall. Curvy. She is flamboyant. Sweet. And dramatic. All these freaking dramatic characters. Oh my god, they all think they're the main character. I really want to see these palettes used in trash core now. But there's our character roster. I talked to a handful of different artists, some I'm friends with, some I've admired for a while, and they're each going to pick one OC that they want to draw. So let's check back and see how they brought them to life right now. We're back. I am wearing the exact same sweater as last time because it's really cozy. Anyway, it's been about two weeks since these characters were randomly created by the will of fate. And in that time, I reached out to a bunch of different artists. All of these artists have been an absolute joy to work with throughout this entire process. So if you like the stuff they did for this video, please check out the rest of their work. I'm gonna be plugging all their socials throughout the video as well as in the description. Tell them Koi sent ya, and if they have commissions open, consider commissioning them. But let's go ahead and dive into our first character, a lazy, goofy, moody firefighter werewolf with a kawaii aesthetic. They were drawn by V. And bring the van on Instagram and Twitter. Let's see how they turned out. Drum roll, please. Ta-da! I love them so much. Look how cute they are. Ah, from the hearts of their outfit, the fire hose and backpack, the clips on their tail, their painted nails, and the TVs. Oh my god. The band-aids are because they're a little clumsy at their job. They're lazy. They can't be bothered to deal with people who accidentally left their oven on. I'm really impressed the color palette works as well as it does, because these aren't exactly colors that are typically associated with the whole kawaii aesthetic. I'm just blown away by this character design. It's so perfect for them. I can't see this werewolf firefighter any other way now. Their name is Misa. They look like a Misa to me. I don't know if you can hear the sirens in the background, but looks like our werewolf is doing their job. Okay, next up is our gloomy, sassy, crybaby merman photographer photographer with a love for cottage core. They were drawn by Crowd J at Crowd J on Instagram and Twitter. And here comes the boy. Here he is. I want to kiss his cheeks. Oh my gosh, I absolutely adore him. I adore him. The beautiful floral skirt that matches the tattoo, his fluffy hair and the tears. Oh my god. He's just so pretty and elegant and I want to know why he's crying all the time. I mean, I don't really blame him. Life is hard, but <laughs> picturing him on the job and he's just swimming in some university fountain and just snapping pictures of people walking by and he's like you're doing great 
Oh, I wish I could walk around too. Ooh, maybe that's part of his motivation, almost like a little mermaid thing where he wants to be able to run around and take all the pictures he can, but he's stuck. He's a mermaid and his dream is being hindered by his fish anatomy. That and he's still lamenting the fact that there's still no foolproof technology for taking photos underwater. But it's his dream, damn it. I will name you... I don't know why Humphrey keeps coming to mind. That's, I want to give you the name Humphrey. Charlie? Hey, Charlie. Maybe Adrian for the Adriatic Sea, and then his middle name could be Humphrey. Next up is our calm, dreamy, witty android assassin drawn by Nywin at Nywin Art on Instagram and Twitter. Let's go ahead and see how they turned out. So good, so good. I was super curious to see just how human or robotic they would turn out. And they definitely look human. They're not like, you know, boxes stacked on boxes like a robot would be but at the same time they're obviously not human they have these amazing purple fissures that remind me of the shimmer from arcane and the purple eye too the eye patch as well oh this character is so cool and the gun they're gonna take someone out i really really like the outfit too and how it just works with the entire look they have going on the pops of green with the boots and the backpack it's so Perfect. They just embody that calm yet cunning energy so well. Like, oh yeah, no, I'm kind of chill, but I'm gonna freaking kill you. I'm feeling a P name for this one, like a Pim. Not Pip. Pim? I think I'm gonna go with Pim. Pim the assassin android. Pim is cooler than I'll ever be. Next up, we have our courageous, lazy, nerdy, fairy mechanic, dressed like a baddie, essentially Tinkerbell with a twist. Drawn by Lauren, at Lauren Fitz on Instagram and at LLRenII on Twitter. Let's see how this fairy baddie turned out. And here she is! With the wings and the art style, she reminds me so much of those Tinkerbell and Friends books I used to read as a kid, and it's taken me back in the best way. She is perfect. With that happy half hooded look in her eyes, she definitely gives off that lazy vibe, but she still has a job to do, so she has all her tools handy. I adore her hair, both the color and how it's kind of messily tousled. And her freckles too! Oh my god! Why are all my OC children way cooler than me? I mean, not that it's very hard to be cooler than me, but she's fantastic. She's a fantastic fairy that's probably gonna be lectured by her superiors, but they can't fire her because she does a damn good job on her work. She knows her stuff. She's a nerd like that. And her piercings in her ears too! Her pointy ears! Because she's a fairy, I want to give her something nature related and looking at her hair and kind of like her demeanor I like dandelion maybe Dee Dee for short she strikes me as someone who would exclusively use nicknames with people because they're shorter easier to remember she doesn't have the energy plus I think she'd have fun coming up with nicknames for people next up is our cheerful devious clumsy gothic angel librarian drawn by Mooney at loud army bombs on Instagram and at moonbrush on Twitter let's take a look at how our very interesting librarian turned out with the color palettes of her clothes and everything, I really like how it's not a super overt goth look and it's a little more understated. It feeds more into her angel charm. And the notes too, scar from falling off the shelf, bless her heart. The halo, she is the cutest little gothic angel I've ever seen. I feel like she'd be really nice if she had to tell you to be quiet and then she'd give you like a nice hot cup of tea afterwards. But because she's devious, she definitely plays pranks on people in the library that she doesn't like. With her wings being able to be retractable, I'm thinking of a scenario where like she catches some kids tearing out pages from a book and then she ships her form into some sort of biblical angel and the kid pisses himself and from that point on whenever he has to go to the library to do book reports he just cries she's so beautiful though she reminds me of a doll she reminds me of almost like those monster high dolls next we have our curious serious contemplative vampire pop idol in loungewear. Just picture the serious vampire type, but in PJs and they're singing and dancing on stage. I love it. Why isn't K-pop capitalized on this yet? This character was drawn by Kaylee at Blondie Vey on Instagram, who also did my icon for my YouTube channel. Thank you very much, Kaylee. Let's go ahead and see our pop idol vampire in loungewear. She is so heckin' cute. Oh my god, and she's so pretty too. She's so regal looking but at the same time you can definitely tell that she's laid back because of the loungewear and she's just enjoying her best idol life i love that for her the reds go so well with her blonde curly hair and the black outfit as well and she's just ah you can see her little teethies and the black lipstick's a really nice touch too with the earrings gosh i want her autograph a little heart too i'm picturing a situation where it's like you now vampires we gotta stay on the down low we can't let humans know we exist and then she's like 
that, I'm gonna become the pop idol of my dream. <laughs> and then reporters are like, hey, so you've like never aged throughout your entire career and your teeth are really sharp. What's the deal with that? And she's like, none of your business, buy my damn albums. I'm living for her, just in her comfy clothes, doesn't give a crap about looking all regal and refined like the good old vampire days and just writing songs in her room, having a good time just making what she loves. And the fans get in on it too. And they're like, oh, it's such a funny meme throughout the fan base. She's a vampire. <laughs> and she's like, yes. <laughs> Funny. All her concerts and stuff were at night, but that's just because she has a sensitivity to sunlight. It's not weird. And she's like, haha, yes, yes, buy my albums. And she's in with the times too. Like her other vampire friends were like, what is Facebook? And she's like, oh, you mean Meta? <gasps> and her management has to ban old style cameras and mirrors that contain silver or else she won't appear in them and then people get suspicious. I like the name Edeline for her. It's old fashioned, but not so old fashioned that people were like, whoa, I haven't heard that name since my grandparents' age. And plus, if she ever meets the mechanic, the mechanic will call her Ed. Edeline, beautiful Edeline. Next, we have our romantic, moody, cocky, vampire grocery store clerk with a 90s fashion sense. Quite the hodgepodge of descriptors. I don't know what Destiny had in mind for this one, but I'm down for it. This boy was drawn by Alex at Four Leaf Magic on Instagram and Twitter. And without further ado, here he is! And he is so freaking pretty! Oh my god, I love the smattering of freckles all over his face. It gives him so much character and his pointy ears and his eyes! His pretty green eyes with a little red in there that's like, oh. Ooh. I love his little grocery bag too with all the veggies and the blood mart. I watch it be like run by vampires and it's just like a front for some nefarious stuff. But he's not involved with the nefarious stuff. He's just working as a grocery store clerk because it's all he can do. He's giving so much flirtatious energy off. Like he's going to be ringing up my groceries and he's like, hey, how's it going? And with him being moody and romantic, I could just see him sitting at the cash register just moping about the fact that he's like, I'm 200 years old and I still haven't found my soulmate. Ah! But then he'd be like, but it's okay. I'm beautiful. It'll come eventually. I want him to be this unholy mixture of like super suave and a total loser. It's just a dork who thinks he's all that, but then he gets knocked down a peg every now and then. I love him. I love him so much. He's just a dork with pointy teeth and really, really nice hair. kind of want to name you Cedric. Something with a C. Claude? Claudius? I like that. Oh my god, so like people will call him Claudius, like it's Claudius, thank you very much. <gasps> One of his biggest missions in his eternal life is to meet Edeline. He's a total fanboy. He's like, I know you're secret, you're a vampire too, but it's okay because I'm one as well, and I love you. We should be eternal levels forever. Ah! But Plotchus, one of the people he's really good friends with, is actually really good friends with Edeline, but they don't tell him because, ha, huh, that'd be kind of funny. And then he finds out eventually, and he just, he's so upset. He's so freaking upset. We have our beautiful clown already, and it's Claude, Claudius. The greens, too. The greens make him so beautiful, but in a dangerous way. But it's also giving him that nature vibe, too. Like, the green tones in his hair, and the flannel, and the veggies. It's like, okay, I'm beautiful, and I'm in touch with, like, my natural side or whatever, but I may be a bit toxic, so you better watch out. Next, we have our cheerful, flamboyant, sassy, vintage-loving, ghost, paranormal investigator. I really don't know how that happened. She was drawn by Quip at NewtTXT on Twitter. So let's go ahead and take a look at our ghost hunting ghost. I love her so freaking much. I don't even have words for how much I adore this design. Holy f From like the 60s garb she has on with the beehive hairdo, her transparent body and only the shadows of the headphones, the microphone, and the tape cassette player being visible in the background. It's so freaking good. The attention to detail. The color scheme fits so well too. It goes so well with the whole ghost thing going on. So I'm not gonna do like a sixth sense angle where like, oh, the ghosts don't know they're ghosts. I think that she's very, very aware that she is not alive, but I'm kind of gonna go at it like a Danny Phantom angle where she is searching for bad ghosts or maybe finding other ghosts to help them pass on, you know? And maybe that was her ambition in life. So when she died and became a ghost, that was why she stuck around because that was her life's mission. And until she's satisfied with helping as many ghosts as she can, cross over, she's gonna stay a ghost. And you know what? I think she has a lot of fun being ghost. She was a really big ghost aficionado in life and in death she's like, I could do all this really cool stuff. Like walk through walls, disappear and fly. I'm much more unique than the other guys. I could really picture her channeling like the cheesy energy from Ghost Adventures and BuzzFeed Unsolved and like, this house was haunted for many years. 
what will we find within its hidden walls? And her friends are like, dude, just hurry up with the investigation. The boba shop closes at 10. God, this character is such a cool concept. Okay, I can see her being named Veronica. I don't know why, just Veronica just instantly came to mind for her. And the Sakusa Kiyomi moles, I see you. The 60s style glasses too. Ah! Next up, we have our contemplative, romantic, dramatic witch scientist in Kid Core. She was drawn by my lovely friend Vic at Vic Patinsky on Instagram and in case you aren't on Twitter. Now let's see our witch scientist. And she is exquisite. She's so fun looking. Oh my God. I absolutely adore her outfit with the suspenders and the buttons and the belt. And she has the freaking potion bottles hanging down from and it. And a broom with sparkles, bells and whistles. Her pants scream fresh prints. I am living for and it. little space buns too. She's so fun. She is so fun and bright looking. So I'm picturing her almost like a mad scientist with like all her stuff thrown out in front of her and she's experimenting, she's researching. She has a little notebook handy for all the discoveries she's gonna make. Pardon yet again another arcane reference, but she's essentially marrying magic and science to create something brand spanking new. And I am here for oh it. Oh my God. She knows the werewolf firefighter because her experiments will sometimes pop up in flames and the firefighter would have to rush over to her apartment or her lab and be like, really, again, you? And she's like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a name for you. Something playful, not picturing anything super fancy. Winnie? Winnie. Winnie the Witch. Next character is a sleepy, curious, sophisticated witch student in pastels. We got another witch, this time a pretty boy witch. This character was drawn by Squish, at Squish Cat on Instagram and Twitter. Are you ready? Because here he is. He's gorgeous. Oh my God, look at his hair. His beautiful braided hair with the hair clips and the flower choker with the little flower pin and the flower tattoos and the flower thing in his belt and his pretty coat and shoes. And gosh, I love his little goatee too. And his glasses. Since he's a witch, I like to imagine him being under the tutelage of the other witch, the witch scientist. And he sees her as this awesome mentor figure but he's also slightly concerned for her at all times. He's like, whoa, you created all these amazing potions. That's incredible. Please put the blowtorch down. And maybe he's a college student on top of it. He just exudes good boy energy. He's a sleepy, sophisticated good boy. And his entire outfit just completely embodies the whole pastel vibes I was hoping for. This is incredible. He definitely smells really good too. Like slightly herby from all the plants he works with, but also with that very elevated cologne sort of scent that blends really well with it. Oh my goodness. Next up, we have our short-tempered, two-faced, dramatic animal hybrid writer who likes vaporwave. For the animal hybrid characters, I let the artist choose what sort of animal they wanted to incorporate into the character. And they were drawn by my beloved friend, Jen, at Orca Ninja on Instagram and Twitter. Now let's go ahead and see our writer. Jen did such a good job with the character design. They're so wave. As you can see, they are a tiger hybrid from the tiger stripes on their skin to the claws, to the tail, to the ears with the earring in it. I love their jacket with that big wave on it. And then of course the marble statue heads that are very emblematic of the vapor wave aesthetic. That smug look on their face, the long hair with the high- Oh my god! I love this so much! She even included another little extra doodle where <laughs> they're writing on AO3 and they're being a two-faced brat. God, they're such a scumbag, but a lovable scumbag. And the tummy action too. What sort of fanfics would they write? How debauched are they? This hot-headed tiger reads roomy to me, so I'm going to call them roomy. And finally, for our very last OC, she's a sweet, flamboyant, dramatic, animal hybrid professor who is into trash core. She was designed by Neri at Neri G's on Instagram and Twitter. Our final drum roll for our last character. Here she is. Boy, is she awesome. She's giving me so much Miss Frizzle energy. I'm dying. From the ripped fishnets, the differing gloves, the funky tie, and the little bolero. And I totally didn't notice this, but she has two different shoes on as well. Her skirt looks like it's shiny. She's a freaking raccoon hybrid, which is perfect for the trash core. And the sunglasses are just cherry on top. She would definitely give the best lectures on campus. I just don't know what she teach. Mushrooms, molds, and society? Why can I see her name being Basil? I'm gonna name her Basil. <laughs> I can't believe I actually just created a small platoon of characters that very well may end up having a fandom of their own. Yeah, I mean, if you guys enjoyed any of these characters, then feel free to make art of them. Feel free to write about them if you want. I don't know what I should call this whole AU? But I'd love to see this turn into something, especially since the artist did a really heckin' good job with just turning these vague descriptions into something amazing. Let's turn this into some sort of friend sitcom slice of life 
feel good show where everyone's just having a good time working their jobs and having fun with each other. Will there be drama? Will there be angst? Knowing some of these characters' personalities and the fact that fans love adding angst to everything? Probably. Will there be romance? Who knows? Thank you again so much to all the artists who were part of this. Please check out their work, everybody. If you'd like to see future projects like this where maybe, I don't know, I'll add even more characters to this whole AU I have going on, then let me know. There are so many wonderful fan artists that I want an excuse to talk to, so yeah, I'd love to do this again. And if you've created your own randomized OC or OCs in the past, how did they turn out? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.